Arsenal 3, Aston Villa 1. Listen, I know a couple of days ago, after the Palace game, I said we weren't going to beat Aston Villa. That was based off of what I watched against Crystal Palace. We looked so bad, so disjointed. Looked like 11 players that just, like, that just met each other on the pitch. No, like literally no cohesion at all. Today was a different story. And I, I have to give credit to Arteta for today again. Like, I've always been saying, when Arteta gets it wrong, I criticise. When Arteta gets it right, I praise. It's that simple. The the formation change. To be fair, it wasn't much of a formation change, but to me it was. Because, like, it was like a 4-4-2, but with Lacazette playing as a second striker. Lacazette weren't playing as a 10 today. He wasn't. He was playing as a second striker in a 4-4-2 shape. And, yo, that, that looked amazing. It looked like prime Aubameyang and Lacazette from 2019 again. Literally, massive throwback this game, man. First, when I saw the lineup, I thought Lacazette was going to play down the middle, and then Aubameyang on the left, which I wasn't really happy about. But then I thought, I was like, hold on, maybe it might be Lacazette and Aubameyang up top, with Lacazette as a second striker, and Smith on the left. And I'm glad that was a shape, because if Aubameyang had played on the left today, Smith on the 10, Lacazette up top, it would not have worked at all. It wouldn't have worked. Thankfully, Arteta, though, like, he, he found the right way to make, the, to make Aubameyang and Lacazette work together perfectly. And it was so good to watch. Just the way these two linked up today was lovely. And uh, Aubameyang, obviously, he got his goal. But we'll get into that later. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, just the football that I saw today was lovely. And I saw sustained pressure from minute one to minute 90. We dominated. The first half, Villa had zero shots, let alone shots on target. Bro. Aston Villa had no shots. We had 14. I've never seen that under Arteta ever that was total domination right there from Arsenal you know and I want to be seeing that every game I'm glad we did it today I'm guessed I'm actually I'm, I'm guessed we did it today but I want to do it every game not just a one-off game against like a Villa or something bro I want to be seeing this kind of domination every single game so anyways like from minute one there was a lot of intensity Aston Villa players that like, did look like they were they were out for a scrap today bro Literally, foul after foul after foul. It was mad. And Craig Paulson, the ref, just kept giving fouls to Villa for no, every single second. Like, it was looking like a mad game, you know. I thought we were going to get screwed over by the ref again. But that turns out to be the opposite, which, I'll, again, I'll get into, like, in a bit. So, we dominate and dominate and then get a corner. And then, of all people, Thomas Partey finally, finally gets his first Arsenal goal. Listen. It wasn't one of those long shots that he keeps attempting every single game, yeah? But a goal is a goal. I am glad Thomas Pai scored, finally. After all those long shots sending the ball out of the stadium, he has finally scored a goal for Arsenal. And hopefully, this is the first of many. Hopefully. And then again, we dominate, dominate, dominate. And then there was that one passage of play, lovely counter-attacking. Um, the ball goes out to Smithrow. Smithrow, lovely weight of pass to Nuno Tavares. Nuno Tavares literally crosses it into Saka. Saka has an easy chance to score and he fucks it. Honestly, Bukayo Saka, he should be scoring that. His finishing is kind of poor, I'm not going to lie. We've seen it last season so many times he could have scored like he just had a soft foot to it. I know Saka's left footed, that shot was on his right foot. I think he should focus on his like, he should focus on um, training his weak foot more. Because not every single opportunity is going to be on your strong foot, mate. You need to train that right foot. Practice that right foot make. I'm telling you, any any other like any other player is scoring that goal. But Kyle Saka needs to work on his finishing. But besides from that, he had a lovely game. He had a decent game today. Without listen, without Nicolas Pepe's trampoline touches on the right wing, we look much more fluid. Saka can actually keep the ball, trap the ball. With Pepe, he just loses it. And I know I said Pepe had a decent game last week, yeah, but he did have flaws. He did. What Pepe doesn't do is keep the ball in transition. He can't do that. He always let he always loses it. It's annoying. Saka doesn't do that. And once again, you play Saka on the right, the team looks better. It's not rocket science, Arteta. It really isn't. So please, for the love of God, don't play Bukayo Saka on the left-hand side again. I don't want to see that. Moving on. The guy that put the ball in for Saka, Nuno Tavares, what a game he had today. What a fucking game Nuno had. Bruv, when Nuno started, I was gassed. 
Because I knew he was about to do a madness today. I rate Nuno. I've rated Nuno for any sign for this club. Yeah? Like, this Nuno performance today, and I, I'm going to say it, this Nuno performance today is better than any Kieran Tierney performance we've seen this season. He had everything. But when Nuno's attacking, yeah, he doesn't just, like, he doesn't just turn back and pass it backwards whenever, whenever they're like, there isn't like a, I guess, clear cut run. Nuno, yeah, he stands there. You see, you see him doing the step overs and shit, trying to get past people. His mind is just attack, 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 which is what I love to see from Nuno. Like the performance today was amazing, and the energy he had, pacing up and down that wing the whole game. I know that is a minimum requirement for a fullback, but Nuno did it brilliantly today, and his defending wasn't too bad either. It was decent. Like this Nuno performance, wow. For me, Nuno is the man of the match. He caused Aston Villa problems down that left hand side. What a player Nuno is, and I want to see him start. I want to see him start from now on. Didn't Arteta say that players get played on merit? Nuno is performing better than Kieran Tierney, so Kieran Tierney should not be getting back into this team. Unless, I don't know, Nuno like has a bad performance. But otherwise, Nuno has to keep starting from now on. Anyways, moving on. Um, late, late in the half, yeah, the ball goes into the box. And then Matt Target... Fouls like a set, but then a penalty is not given. And then, like, two minutes, I think, later, like, I think um, the ref blows the whistle, goes to VAR, checks the screen, gives a penalty. Usually, yeah, when it's, like, a couple minutes after the foul, they don't go and, like, overturn the decision. But today, they did it. And VAR owes us one today. They owe us one for not sending off uh, MacArthur last... Uh, it's not even last week. That game was only a couple of days ago. Anyways, for not sending off MacArthur for, uh, for that challenge on Saka. And Saka was lucky to even be playing today. I thought Saka wasn't going to play. I'm so glad he did. But yeah, big up VAR for working well today. Thank you, VAR. And then, the, as the penny was given, Aubameyang obviously stepped up to take it. A. Martinez doing the mind games thing that he always does. You know A. Martinez, man. And he, and he actually saved the penalty. Fair play to A. Martinez. He saved the pen, but then Aubameyang scored the rebound. A. Martinez was on the floor crying. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm so happy for Aubameyang, man. He looks like he's back to his best. Four goals in four at the Emirates this season, yeah? Like, he looks to be... He looks to be firing again, man. Firing again, Aubameyang. He's got more goals than Romelu Lukaku this season. And Lukaku's meant to be the world-class... Like, the world-class striker. And Aubameyang's meant to be finished. That's all I'm saying on that. <laughs> but anyways, Aubameyang, he also contributed to the third goal. That flick onto Smith Rowe, it's similar to the one he did in North London Derby. Similar. That, that flick with the outside foot, Smith Rowe ran, ran, ran. I thought Smith Rowe was going to cut in and do something, but he went for the near post and it worked. Post in, go. Smith Rowe again. Smith Rowe on that left hand side is amazing, man. He just needs like a lot of, a lot, a lot of passes played to his feet and he's going he's gonna to produce Smith Rowe. What a baller. I love him. And again, he scored today and he got an assist for, for Thomas Partey's goal. Like, all-round brilliant performance. The only complaint I have for today is the fact that we conceded a goal. It is so annoying conceding a goal after dominating a game like that. So annoying. We could have conceded a second as well because Ben White, yeah? Ben White stood there, yeah? It was ball-watching, let the ball go past, and Ollie Watkins fucked, fucked the finish. If that had gone in, that would have been a ropey last five, six minutes. Nervy as heck. But we thank God that didn't go in. Do you know what I'm saying? But honestly, we need to stop conceding. I hate when we're like 3 nil up and concede. It's so fucking annoying. It ruins the game. Do you know what I'm saying? That Jacob Ramsey goal was so preventable. It's almost probably, I don't know what on earth he was doing for that, yeah? Like, he put he backed out of the challenge, even though he could have just went in for it. He backed out of it. And then top, uh, Jacob Ramsey appeared out of nowhere and slapped it top bins. That was a beautiful goal, by the way. Fair play to Jacob Ramsey. But, yeah... And uh, another player I want to talk on, Aaron Ramsdale. Bro, Ram these Ramsdale performances are becoming his standard now. The guy is so damn good. I never knew Ramsdale was this good at playing out from the back. He's such a good ball-playing keeper. The, the passes he made today, yeah? His distribution, everything about Ramsdale is brilliant. He even made, like, a, he made, he made, like, a nice save late in the game again from a Buendia shot. Bro, Ramsdale, what a goalkeeper he signed, man. I am so happy Ramsdale has shut all of our mouths. He's proven me wrong. He's proven all the fans wrong. None of us wanted him when he signed, and now look what he's doing. Big up Aaron Ramsdale. And finally, 
just another player I want to touch on again, Sambi Lokonga. This was his best game for Arsenal ever. He was causing Villa so much problems, especially in transition. Yeah, he was like the midfielder making like that late run into the box or like, I don't know, just being the extra man up front, making extra runs today. Lokonga, like he was, he was brilliant today, Lokonga, bro. What a player. Like finally the Lokonga party pivot looks to be working. Usually, they play Thomas Partey on the left side of the pivot and Lokonga on the right. But when you switch them around, Lokonga on the left, Partey on the right, it seemed to be working today. Like, they seem to be clicking now. Do you know what I'm saying? So, I'm glad I'm glad Lokonga's having a good time right now. And I hope to see more of this. But, until the next game, this has been my match review. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.